Hey, this is Brian Stillman with Be Terrific. We're at CES 2020 in Las Vegas, Nevada. We are checking out all the cool gear this week. Uh, everything new that's coming out uh, in the next year, next two years, next three years. Some of it coming out way in the future. Um, right now, we are with uh, BrainCo. We're with the team from BrainCo. You have a lot of, um, it's human machine interfaces, basically. Yeah, uh, yeah. All different ways of approaching human machine interfaces. Why don't you talk to me a little bit about that? Tell me what you brought along with you and uh, yeah, sure. what you're here uh, to show off today. Fantastic. So at BrainCo, uh, we believe in like brain machine interface. So we've created a couple different products and solutions to help people, uh, some of them being a direct solution, our award winning prosthetic. So our prosthetic that we have seen right here actually has unlimited gestures, it is AI powered, and it gets even better. When we made this product, we want to talk about affordability and access. So its price point is ten to fifteen thousand. Oh wow! Our nearest, so. Yeah, nearest competitors are around the forty thousand dollar price range. So it's really making it accessible to the people who need it. Exactly. It's one thing to have amazing technology, but it's also about being able to give it to people on the masses. So that was a goal of our company to be accessible and to be something that's actually equitable and accessible to everyone in the community. So what sort of technology is involved in the prosthetics? Sure. Uh, fantastic. So there is actually an EMG ring that in the cuff right over here. So what the EMG is doing is looking at your uh, electrical impulses that your muscles naturally create. Now with those impulses, our amputees are able to have uh, pretty much all their gestures. They can open, close, move their thumb. Uh, it's, as you can see, yeah. <laughs> yeah, move each individual fingers. Yeah, individual fingers can be moved. The thumbs can get uh, tighter so they can grip things as well. And we actually, this is a double setup uh, that, so we're using both of the prosthetics simultaneously, which is very cool. Wow, and so now you develop the technology? Yes. This? So yeah. can you talk to me a little bit about how you developed it, how you developed it in a way where it could remain affordable, but also remain as effective as it needs to be? Uh, so when we designed this prosthet prosthetic hand, we're thinking about the hand itself and the sensors and all as a system. So we designed everything from our company as a system instead of you need to buy something from other company so we can control all the cost. Another thing is the, the design of the hand will make it more effective and also the design make it uh, the manufacturing process is really much more cheaper yes. and a modular design. Yeah. Additionally, as you can see, it has a modular design. Okay. That was yeah. done on purpose because it's about sustainability. We don't want something that when a prosthetic is being utilized, it's literally, you got to buy a whole new one. That's not realistic. We want something that someone can wake up, start their day, come back home, do everything within their daily activity, within their daily routine. And if there ever is an issue, a repair is what very easy to do. Now, I have a question for me. Is it, was it difficult to learn to use it? Was it difficult to interface with it? Uh, no, it's not difficult. How long did it take you to become comfortable with it? Uh, Ten minutes. Really? That yes. fast? Yeah. Um, were you surprised that it was so easy to use? Very, very surprised, amazing. <laughs> um, so, when working on something like this, yes. what are you thinking about? What are the criteria that you're looking to adhere to um, in terms of making something that's effective, making something that's cost effective? Yeah. Um, what are the sort of baselines that you want to achieve? Yeah, well for us it's about, you know, as a company at BrainCo, we don't want to live in the lab, we want to live in real life. And that being said, we have to think about real world application, real world use cases. So our team challenged themselves to say, how can we make something that will provide these unlimited gestures? How can we look at every single component from the screws to the battery pack, every single part of it, and say, okay, where can we save costs and at the same time not take away from experience? What's the most challenging part of approaching a project like this? So one challenging part is we are using AI technology, using machine learning. And in order to make it work, we need to have multiple sensors embedded in the arm. And that's the, we are the only company trying to have multiple sensors to marry all the neuron activities from muscles. And this part is, from the technical point, it's really challenging because the signal is really tiny and the muscles are kind of overlapping each other. How can we, the machine, know which muscle 
the user trying to move and which finger tries to move. So this part is the challenging part. Yeah, no. it's it's very difficult because you know there's already there's a lot of muscles in that area, but to get that really good signal quality to replicate it was a challenge that our team had to overcome. And you know we've been at this for quite some time, and we're happy to say 2020 is that year. We're going through FDA, and the goal is to make this something that any person can get on and experience a truly groundbreaking experience that is about quality of life. What sort of leaps did you make uh, in developing this uh, in terms of the interface, the sort of human uh, machine interface? Um, what kind of uh, leaps did you have to make to bring this all together? I think one thing you need to have the electrodes, the sensor design, have very accuracy, have high sampling rate. A second thing you need to have really good contact because each person's limb is quite a different shape. How do you make something unique for right. them? and have a good contact of the signal. Yeah. So this interface is the key point to help him to control the hand. Yeah. And as a company, when it comes to sensors, we got our start uh, with one of our earlier products I have here. This is our Focus One wearable. So this actually is an EEG. And we did have to create our own proprietary sensor. So as a company, we've always looked for new solutions to existing technologies to actually improve them and make it more user uh, friendly. So. What is what is that? Oh, okay, yeah, so awesome. Brought it out. I mean, yeah, yeah. So Brainco is a company. Uh, we do a lot of amazing work. Uh, our wearable here is something that we've been working on for quite some time, and it is actually able to quantify engagement and relaxation uh, through your EEG signal. So. Where is this useful? How are we using this? That's the real question. So we're actually partnered with a couple of really amazing organizations, one being the United States weightlifting team. We actually, they actually use our wearable as their official training tool for cognitive training. So for them, it's about getting the athletes into a mental headspace where they are pretty much in tune, ready to go. They're focused on what needs to get done, but they're not super anxious. And on the other side of it, we also do cognitive training tr and also mindfulness practices. So that also extends into uh, educational markets where we're trying to help kids with their focus, with their cognitive function, cognitive training, using our wearable through an application platform. So how does the technology in this uh, relate to the technology and the prosthetics? Of course, it's a good question. So, this the where F1 came first, and it was actually at CES when an amputee came up to us and said, wow, your wearable has the potential to control different things. And we said, yeah, it does. Let's see what we can do. Because we want to know what we can push our potential, our technology. So we tried to have the wearable control the prosthetic. It didn't go ideally well, and that's okay. So. It kind of forced us to rethink our sensor technology and kind of uh, reimagine what we could do. So this is EEG, that is EMG. Yes. So there are two different kinds of uh, biofeedback that occur naturally in the human body, but uh, this gave us an entry point into us reimagining other methods of biosensors. I see. Yeah. Um, now, I, I noticed you also have oh, uh, yeah. a unit over here. Yeah. Um, what, what's over here? Let's so, uh, put that down. And, yeah. So this actually is, I wish I could have, I yeah, uh, I'm gonna need yeah. another hand. There you go. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. So for us, this is a tool that we use to actually teach education. So we're actually teaching education with our STEM kits. So this is our Brain Co. STEM kit. Oh, wow. So this is something that uh, we do sell already into the educational space, 6th to 12th graders. It actually comes with curriculum. The kids will build it, put it together. They're going to code it. They're going to learn about prosthetics, about uh, what we're doing. And the idea is, is to inspire the next generation of learners to go into biomedical, to go into algorithm engineering. And we have a wide multitude of accessories that do work with it, one being this flex club right here. Additionally, our wearable does work with it also. So using your EEG signal, you can control the functions and movements of this STEM kit. Uh, it's something we're very proud of because we know learning isn't, this is amazing, this is a fantastic product, but we know the future's gonna hold even more fantastic products, and we wanna inspire the future generation of learners every single day. 
So now this is a kit that people can buy. Yeah, uh, we sell directly into education. Uh, for us, it's about having teachers teach in STEM classes, STEM curriculums. Uh, we have curriculum included. It can be taken apart, put back together numerous times. So for a school, it's fantastic because they can move it around to best suit their needs within STEM. Uh, it has C, C++, C++, uh, it's an Adreno Uno, so C, C++, and Python. How much does something like this cost? Uh, with everything the curriculum included, it goes for about $4.99. And where can people find it if they want to uh, get it for their classrooms, for their schools? We'll uh, go to braincode.tech and there's a STEM kit product selection right there and it will redirect to us directly. Very cool. Uh, I can definitely see how that would be helpful for teaching STEM, teaching different concepts involved in it. Um, so I'm curious, <laughs> getting, getting the prosthetics, um, have you found that they have uh, restored uh, a level of control and a level of uh, um, a lifestyle that you were missing before. I mean, have have do they work the way you hoped they would work? Uh, so he will try to do a lot of things he haven't done before and during the process he learned how to utilize the hand to do like uh, each finger and also do any gestures yeah, he just right. want to do right away. The other really fun piece to take away is uh, Mr. B was able, he was actually able to uh, write in calligraphy again. Oh wow. Yeah, so actually at our booth uh, in the South Hall, we were, do, we were doing demonstrations uh, with our amputees drawing and writing calligraphy. That's amazing. And um, also he can play ping pong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what activities, I mean, what were the activities that you missed that you were able to get back as a result of the prosthetics? <laughs> So one thing is he's kind of holding a pen, writing calligraphy, and another thing is he can holding a cup and eat and drink. And also he can play ping pong. <laughs> and, and another thing he can just holding some some uh, tools, small tools, and also he can try to cook. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it really seems like a, a life changer, and, and yeah. it seems to the the effectiveness of it, and and then coupled with the cost effective of, uh, effectiveness of it, uh, is pretty incredible. Yeah, uh, we're we're very thankful that uh, at CES we're getting a lot of good reception. Uh, we're proud of our products. We're proud of what we're doing at Brainco. Uh, for us, it's about empowering our users, empowering people through technology. So this is just one step in the way of what we're trying to do as a company. We're very proud of our initiatives. And just something that's really remarkable, during this whole interview, the hand is moving on its own because he actually used to talk, he talks a lot with his hands. Oh. So you see the fingers are moving. That's because it's the, that muscle impulse is still being sent to it. Oh. So it, uh, it's, it's, it's truly amazing because I talk with my hands and we were having a conversation at dinner last night about this. And then I saw it firsthand today. <laughs> it's incredible tech. Um, seeing the, the leaps forward we're making with the uh, ability to um, interface with machines and interface with technology is, is something. Uh, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you. Thank you so much for showing off yes. uh, and demonstrating some of the technology that you've got with thank us. You, thank you. Best of luck in the future. Best of luck, sir. Thank um, you so much. I'm Brian Stillman. I'm here with Be Terrific. We're at CES 2020 bringing you continuing coverage. Stick around. We're going to have a lot more for you.